Okay. Hi guys, I'm really, really happy to introduce you to Kate Cadore, who is a beautiful human being, has been the guide to us, and is a wonderful medium and psychic. And uh, of course, you know Yogini J. Ma as well. And uh, we're going to have a little discussion about the times that we're in. And also, uh, Kate is going to read a, a letter from the soul keepers, who are our souls on the other side, who are going to guide us through this time and what they said. So, uh, hi, girls. Hi, ladies. We're going to hand it to you, Kate. But uh, uh, we really want to be a little bit enlightened. Everybody's looking for some guidance these days on what is going on to us and for us so we're really looking to uh different modalities and people to guide us and uh, show us that these times really mean something and they are for the good of humanity and not just uh all the gloom that we hear on the news right well hi my beautiful friends thank you hi. for having me today i'm so honored to be able to do this and uh, quickly i will tell you i am a psychic and a medium as you said and one of the um beautiful ways that i've been honored to do some of the practice is to channel and oftentimes people are like whoa the channeling but um i do uh, channel higher source energy through uh, writing and what happens i've been practicing that for about 15 years now what happens is i'll put headphones on and i listen to adele or whitney houston whatever is my fancy for the day and I'll do this before I sit with a client um, about an hour before to channel a message from what um, I call the soul keepers. Actually, they told me that I need to call them the soul keepers. I used to just call them my board members because I always felt as if I had tons of energy sources coming in and doing the work at a, a board table essentially mm -hmm. so um they said no kate no we're not your board members we are the soul keepers because i'm just the channel i'm just the body just the voice and so that is what i do i've been practicing that for about 15 years every client that i have i sit down and write a letter for them and i'm not there when i do it as crazy as that sounds but i'm out of myself and my spiritual ears are hearing um the the message from the higher um, source from source energy. So, um, Jema, you both have asked me, um, and I'm again, so honored to read the letter. I did sit down with the soul keepers, um, for the collective, um, globally, they, they insisted essentially that I do that. And you both know what, what that's like when you're being uh, asked to, um, be of service. So I will go ahead and read the letter if you'd like me to do that as quickly yes. as I can. And we'll see, um, I heard it uh, for the first time the other day when I shared it with my um, um, social media settings as well and clients. So here we are. So this is what um, Higher Source Energy, the Soul Keepers, ask or, uh, me to say during this time. That in this time you must know, dear ones, that all is well. Even though you may feel as if all is lost in turmoil or you feel alone or abandoned by your higher power. There is goodness in what is occurring globally. The power that this carries shall be revealed once all souls settle in and understand that the consciousness of each soul is what is being tested. We ask you now, what do you hold to in times of despair? What is important? What do you manifest while in this place of uncertainty? How will you carry forth love, compassion, and grace for those around you? This pandemic is not truly a pandemic. It is, as the divine would label for your human comprehension, an actual academic experience. It is one in which each soul must take all tools that one has to reach yourselves in new ways of thinking, of communicating, of connecting to source, to self, and to the highest power of all, Mother Earth. You see, you have destroyed yourselves. You have taken on selfish intentions, wanting to accumulate more, wanting things instead of trusting the space where peace can exist. You have been blaming others instead of self for what is happening to the earth you share. Mm -hmm. 
You have forgotten that there is only one thing that truly exists, and this is love. There is nothing else. This time you are in is to renew, to clean out the old ways of the mind, to extend a new foundation for the light workers, the believers, the collective of souls who truly seek truth. Take a look at your world, your planet. You only draw attention to it when your soul or human race is dying or threatened and when your existence is troubled and convenienced or not comfortable. We say that many are waking up, but are you? Are you sitting within, taking a look at yourselves? Asking, what can I do to be better? How can I make this an opportunity? We say take comfort in this time. Yes, people are dying. Yes, it is a tremendously fearful time for many. But we ask you to be patient, be quiet, be aware of your feelings now. Be joyful in tune and in tune with your bodies. Be in tune with each other. This too shall pass and renewed energy will come to the earth. This had to happen for many reasons so that your human ego will, that your human ego will not understand. But your soul ego is the one that holds love and joy. And this will see, that ego will see that this brings about beauty. It brings unity brings about global change. Many of you are acting on ego, not understanding that you must make sacrifices for others, must come to a place of service and giving for your race. You must put down your selfish needs and thoughts of inconveniences and struggle and go within, go deep. No matter your beliefs about God, source higher beings go within for you are the higher source you are higher energy you are what many of you call god as a collective you can make this time pass more quickly with ease and beauty to a degree if you go within and listen look at what you have instead of what you do not Pray for all who have fallen, those who are making certain that others are cared for, and then do nothing else but go within. Stop manifesting negative thoughts by constantly looking at your social outlets. Tune out and instead turn on your own inner light. We are with you. We are guiding you out of this into a new time of peace. Be well the soul keepers um, thank you for sharing or letting me share that thank you kate wow there's a lot in there <laughs> yes sometimes it's a little too lengthy but a they lot. have to say. <laughs> a lot of really powerful messages and it feels so good to hear because um it's it's intuitively kind of you know it's, I think all spiritual practitioners can see that, that this is happening for mm -hmm. a higher reason, as difficult as that is. Um, but the, the strongest message for me during this time has just been about our individual um, responsibility, our individual consciousness, and that it really is just about us and our responsibility to, as was written, um, to turn that light on within because I just feel that, you know, if we want to contribute to the collective, if each one takes that responsibility and it becomes that light, we can actually have the power to shift the collective and really turn um, in, in our, in the yogic culture, this is known as Kali Yuga, which is like the dark ages, you know, it's, it's yes. the, the densest time of consciousness when we have forgotten as the letter said that we actually our God, we are divine, you know, the Maya is so dense that we've forgotten it. And I think that this is just that epic moment um, um, 
on the spiritual path and in this era of consciousness, this era of time, where we have the opportunity, as was written, I think you said, this is an opportunity to actually um, shift that. And it starts with us first. Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah, like, you know, one of the things I take away from it and I've been thinking about for a long time is how frivolous we've become in how we live. So this is our dark age. Um, and people tend to think, well, you know, in the time of the Vikings, your head was getting cut off and you had no rights and, you know, all these different things. Yeah, that was that dark age. And this is a different dark age. Um, there's a lot of light in this age, but we really became too frivolous with the earth. Just everything was throw away clothing, throw away this, and we're throwing everything away. We're mm -hmm. going through relationships. We're going through friendships. We're going through all the different things. Um, so the earth suffered, uh, we suffered, and then we're in this large suffering and we call it life, you know, but actually it's sucking the life out of us. So this is really, I, when this started to happen, I really thought, wow, we, we really have a chance here to reset. Um, and I do personally to see what can I do better? How can I live better? And what are the things I could do better for other people, for myself and family and everybody? Um, and then and then start to see the world as a family. That's really something that's uh, unique. Uh, a lot more people being kind and loving and spending the time together. And so I think uh, people feel how much more connected they need to be with everybody around the world because suffering is universal. It's not racial and it's not sexual. It's not any of that stuff. Absolutely. So that's what I'm getting from the from the letter as well. Yeah, well, that that's what you know. One of the the points of the letter was that to take this time and to go within, and going within is really observing your own personal patterns and how you're operating. And um, it, uh, I believe, it said something like, "Drop the old," you know, drop the old patterns that are not serving, and also take responsibility. We, you know, this isn't about blaming. We ourselves first are responsible for first just our individual reality, you know, and then how we contribute um, to the collective. So take responsibility, go within, and then be, you know, the epic, all-encompassing reminder that we are love. Focus on love. Focus on what you have and, and not what you don't have. And, um, and care for that, that, the greatest, um, I think you said, um, the, the highest power of all, Mother Earth. And we have, a, we have a responsibility to her, to be aware of her and to um, balance our relationship with her and not just take, take, take. Um, I think it's, I, I agree. And I think it's important to, I just want to say that, you know, channeling um, the divine source as well. It's interesting that they did talk about Mother Earth and that being the highest energy, but I think that I, uh, they also want others to understand, too, that the source, what they were talking about going within, that that is where it starts. And in this, in society, being busy is a status. And so it, it's about hitting the pause button and starting right here. We cannot meet anyone else where we don't meet ourselves first. Therefore, we cannot even begin to extend service, to lend a hand to our, you know, our elders or whatever we're called to do during this time, whether that be your clients or my clients or, you know, our partners and, you know, family members. We just can't meet anyone with grace until we sit and go within and maybe deal with some of those things. And I think the soul keepers and the divine really are calling all of us, no matter what, to sit with that daily. And then it, and then it's a beautiful extension right into, into the collective of Mother Earth and all of these things. And um, that's my take from the message when I've, when I've been sitting with them. Because, I mean, granted, it's, we're so it's very difficult for some of us to sit uh, with ourselves and, and, and I'm not saying, and I know you two certainly aren't telling your clients, okay, we'll go and meditate, you know, for hours every day and all this is going to be great. No, because we're all dealing with this very, very differently and we have to meet each other with grace, whether it be fears or whether it be that we don't have anxiety and we're okay. And I think that was just a beautiful message of just hit the pause button and go with it. 
We don't need to be busy right now. We don't need to write a book right now. We don't need to, you know, tr turn the world upside down just right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just right here for now. Anyway, that's my, that's my input <laughs> on mm. that. But. Beautiful. So just so. connect or well, connecting inwardly is connecting with everybody anyway. Right. So Absolutely. outwardly we wear our bodies are, are different and our minds are different, but uh, what we're coming to an understanding of, of is that the soul is a part of the great super soul. And that's, mm -hmm. that's our connectivity. So when it's, uh, when they're saying go inward, that's what I'm taking is go inward and connect with the divine, but connect with everybody else, because that is how you are really truly connected to everybody else. Because on the outside, it's more difficult to see other people as yourself because you're connecting to their personality and to their face and to their clothing and their ethnicity and yes. everything tends to point towards division rather than unity. That's why everybody hangs out in their groups. Mm -hmm. But when we go inwardly, we realize, um, hopefully, that we are the same as everybody else and all the clothes of religion and race and creed and all that sort of go away and we melt into that river which is one right uh, but you know so it doesn't have to be just meditation because meditation is very difficult on some level it but is. <laughs> sitting quietly and you know I, I have some sometimes i'm working with people and it's just going for walks on the beach because sitting quietly to them is just impossible so if it's going for a walk, if it's uh, listening to chanting, if it's uh, something soothing that gets the mind to just be, like you said, on its own within itself, that's good enough. That's all that's necessary. Sure, sure. To, come, to be able to, you know, be aware and, and reflect, because if we can't have, um, like you mentioned, Kate, that pause, you know, we'll never be able to reflect. But... Um, you know, it doesn't have to be, it's not about so much stillness as it is being active and being proactive and choose, making positive choices throughout the day. And those choices can simply just be within our own thoughts, you know, but um, we have a choice. We have a choice every day to, to choose to be the light within us rather than the negativity, to choose the positive over the negative, to choose to be peaceful, to choose to be loving, to choose to speak kindly. Um, to not, there was such a great point at the end, um, to stop manifesting negative thoughts by looking at social outlets, yes. you know, like <laughs> the soul keepers are telling us, you know what I mean? Like, don't do that, you know? Wow. Careful listening, yes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, because it's, 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 weighing, it's weighing heavy. So stop yeah. that and really tune into that positive power within and shine that light. Um, it's just hard. It can be hard to do in our world. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, um, Yogini, but uh, yeah, it can be hard to do when you, you're, you know, seeing things and picking up your phone and then you call your mom and then she's, and that can be very difficult, but I think it's, it was very poignant that they said that just maybe mm -hmm. put down the phones and, you know, because everything is energy, right? And mm -hmm. so and you too are very familiar with that, but if we're focusing and putting our mindset there, then we're feeding that collective as opposed to the light collective, which is what we really need to be doing during mm -hmm. this time. And so, but. Or connecting, it does, it does need some element of stillness, but at the same time, it does need a element of activity because like we get up in the morning, you're doing your practice is activity to mm -hmm. get to that stillness, mm -hmm. you know? Sure. sure. And these times I don't think are for keeping just busy until this is over. You know, I, I, I know a lot of people are talking about that and just right. we were talking about staying within a routine that gives you time during the day to be with yourself. Um, mm -hmm. but the great opportunity that it's speaking about for me is to do it better, like it said, mm -hmm. uh, like mm -hmm. they're telling us, you can do this better. Yeah. It just takes some stillness to understand how to do it better by reflecting on your entire life and saying, how have I been doing it? Now, the things that I've been doing, which are peaceful, let me continue doing those things. And the things that I was just maybe rushing around, maybe too much social media, too much TV, too much whatever, let me start to evaluate that and see, 
do I want in 20, 30 years that that was my life, you know? Uh, because hindsight is one thing, but we can look into the future. Looking into the future, it means looking at how you've been living the last, let's say, five years, 10 years, 20 years. <clears throat> and if you're continuing that habits, then that will be your future. So you can see partly how you're going to be in the future if you look at the past a little bit. So that's another way of seeing, you know, what, what are the habits I need to change? What is, what is the way of speaking I need to change? You know? Yes. And it's, and it's a great time to make peace with all the people you've been, you know, not harmonious with. True. We're having to look at those things, aren't we? <laughs> I think it's brought it all at once. <laughs> it just, life went halt, you know, suddenly in one day. So everybody was like, going through the stages of, well, this can't really be true. And now everybody's like, how long is this going to go on for? Oh, you know, so no but, else really do we, we don't really know how long it's going to go on. We don't, but, um, but the that's part of, the pity of it because we always want answers as human beings. And mm -hmm. they're saying no. I think they're saying no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing when, uh, I had a reading with you, one of the things was I wanted to know t some timings of certain things and there were timings because it was almost saying, look, I can tell you a part of the future and I can tell you how it will turn out if you continue this way, but the timing is always in the divine's hands and That's I'm not, right. re not revealing that. <laughs> no. That's right. There are certain things they may give a time frame on such as will I move to a different location? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to your life, uh, path they never take away that journey for you or my clients by giving me the specific timing mm -hmm. of those things because what fun would there be in that <laughs> we knew everything and when it was going to happen that's part of the process of learning patience and having faith and trust so but yes it, wouldn't it be great though if they just said okay it's going to be over on you know yeah well, well 21st <laughs> <laughs> well that that's what the ego wants right but then then like you said what where would the faith be because we're, we're operating blindly in faith uh, most of the time knowing uh, well it's so true because then it would become like a countdown until <laughs> the end rather than the unknowing is really forcing us into reflection and growth and mm -hmm. um, you know Yogi, like you're saying, to build that new routine, or like uh, Kate, uh, the soul keeper said, to build the foundation. And so mm -hmm. that's what this sacred opportunity is right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone is going to receive something. There's no one any more special than anyone else. We're all, as a collective, going to receive something, everyone, um, even the fallen. Um, so we're all, we're all learning something and, uh, moving forward on our journey. Mm. So. Mm. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so thank you. Curious. We're all in different parts of the world right now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, our connection was good too. How about that? <laughs> it was it was very good. And um, yeah, just thank you for, for sharing that that you know higher spiritual perspective which is very much needed at this time and really what Yogi and I are trying to do with our community is you know just kind of elevate and give different spiritual perspectives and um it's been so great speaking with you well it's my honor thank you so much my beautiful friends and we all can tune in to source if we just take a few minutes so I hope and send that uh, to everyone mm -hmm. um your world and, and mine and your network. So thank you for having me. I right. send you lots of good love and say hi to the little Emmy for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> how, uh, how do people find you? Just tell them. Oh, um, you can find me at www.katecatteray.com. It's C-A-D-O-R-E. Um, you can Google me and I'd be honored to help anyone. And also I, um, I, just so you can find all that information on there. I'm on Instagram and Facebook too, but I'm also um, actively working on other cold cases and things like that. So if there's anyone out there in the realms who uh, needs that type of assistance as well, but intuitive work and all of that. So thank you. And I appreciate it.
and I will talk to you both soon. And hopefully we'll have that brunch again at some point in the year. <laughs> at some point. <laughs> yeah. You'll be well, both of you. Yeah, lots of love. Lots of love. You too. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.